Hey, I'm Mike. I'm Brad, nice to meet you. All right, so what we got here, at TTX? TTX 36, we're gonna disassemble it. So uh, the first thing we wanna do is we gotta get our nitrogen gas pressure off of it. That's usually pretty important. It, it usually is when you're gonna take a shock apart. Uh, all of that's done right here in the top. We've got a little T20 Torx, um, so we need to remove that out of there. Back in behind this is a little O-ring. It's just a little dust O-ring. Has no sealing properties to it. All right. Now down inside of here, we've got a self-healing rubber. So okay. we actually take our gas filling device, which has a hypodermic needle on it, on this end, so we have to be super careful with this. So we wanna start with just the needle. Um, we do wanna put a little bit of grease on that needle so it slides into that self-healing rubber. So it just pokes right through It just the pokes right through, and once I get this cap out, I'll show you that. All right. So we wanna try to center that needle in there and then just push it in, and it actually screws in to where the, the little screw that we took out okay. goes. So if we wanted to check gas pressure, we can put that on there. We can right. look at the pressure that's in there. We will have about a bar uh, loss in this system. Uh, what we check that, we disconnect and we can let our nitrogen pressure out. So the, so the gauge there is like a really low volume one because uh, when you put it on, there isn't that much volume, so. There's really not. Um, we've got this piston, the floating piston in here is about 15 millimeters off bottom. So if we take the height of the piston minus that 15 millimeters, you know, it's sitting somewhere about right here. So we have very small air volume. And you already know the volume, it'll make it drop about a bar, so when you fill it up, you just put a bar extra in? Yes. Oh, okay. So. I always wondered about that. Yeah. Um, one other thing that we can do to help us get this shock apart, we wanna open the adjusters up. Mm -hmm. Right here on the com low speed compression adjuster, this particular shock has a uh, low speed compression and then actually a two way um, rebound adjuster, so a high and low speed. So we want to go ahead and open those circuits up so the oil can fl flow freely through the shock. Um, that's a, you can use a 12 there. You can also use a 12 on the high speed. So we'll run that all the way back out. Also in the center of that 12 high speed adjuster is a three mil Allen for our low speed. Mm -hmm. So we can open that up as well. All right, gas pressure is off. Um, these are open, mm -hmm. so we can start by taking the cap off of this. You can see the little cutout right here in the cap. All right. We've got a special tool here made by Orleans that slides right into there. And then we just take a steel hammer, and this gets a little bit loud, but just give her a quick little pop. Once we're inside the cap, we can see our seal head here. Okay. Um, we can see uh, holes all the way around the seal head. Here again, we've got a tool that Olean's makes that has three pins on it. So you can set it down in there. You can see it's got a place for a ratchet. So we just put a ratchet on there and turn the seal head. Whoops. Tighten her up a little bit. This screws into the body. So we're gonna bring it out. One thing that I do to help myself with these TTXs, once I've got my seal head out, because at this point there is a bit of a vacuum in there, mm -hmm. if we look on the top of the shock right here, mm -hmm. that's our filling screw where we're gonna put our, our filling piece into. Right. So if we take that and take a T25 Torx, just, kind of crack, just crack that baby open, and then we can let air come in, in behind the seal head. And it doesn't create that vacuum. So this makes it a lot cleaner when we take these apart. Mm -hmm. See, now I can just ease that seal head out of there, pull that up. And that's there, kind of the inner tube. That right? is the inner tube, absolutely. There's our inner tube. Does have a chamfer on this side. Is flat on the top side. And then we can see our shaft assembly. Chamfer uh, goes up, right? No, the chamfer will go down onto the piston and it actually well, it actually sits right there okay. on our seal head, and there's our cutouts for the refill on the bottom side. Oh, all right. 
And the uh, chaffer is to kind of get past all the... It's the to help the piston that. everything when you put it on, yes okay. sir. And then this has a place inside of the cylinder head to sit on. All right. So I'm gonna set that over to the side and dump this oil out. And that's a solid piston, there's no valves in that. There, there is not, no sir, there is no shims. Um, and, and like you said, this is a solid piston. It actually has a little spacer down below it there. And then this is our seal head, so very simple. Uh, you will notice an O-ring on that piston. Um, in conjunction with the piston band, that puts pressure on the piston band to make sure mm -hmm. it's sealing on that inner tube. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, this is a split piston band. Some of our solid pistons have uh, solid bands on them oh, okay. that slide over and we size back down to it. Um, so a couple of different designs when it comes to that. All right, as far as our shock body over here. And then the inner tubes to uh, let the fluid go uh, up to the other side of the uh, piston. Right? Yes, sir, yes, sir. So I'm gonna dump this oil in our pan here to get it out of our way so we can be a little bit cleaner. And then we'll actually take the floating piston out. Is that like a special fluid? Uh, it is a special fluid. It's the Olean's fluid and they've spent many, many years and lots of money to develop their, their suspension fluid. So, so it can work at its highest performance. All right. And it's the same weight for every single Owens product? No, sir, it is not, oh, it is okay. not. So we have different weights depending on what products you use, whether it's off-road, um, hypersport, um, and, and even our mountain bikes use some different oils. Oh, okay. So it, it all depends on number one, the design of the shock, uh, and number two, kind of what it's being used on. All right. So um, yes, de definitely different viscosities. So to get the, uh, Floating piston out, we need to get this cap back. It does have a circlip in behind it here, so we just take a rubber hammer, give her a little tap. All right. Now you can see that circlip in there. And with this little Olean's tool that screws into where that screw was, we put this in, then we can push it down and oh, pull, that, pull that little circlip out. We'll set the part I hate about messing with those. Correct, it, it can be quite a pain. All right, and there's that cap. And now we see the backside of that self-healing rubber. Right. And I told you I would show you what it looks like. So now you can see how the hypodermic needle comes through. And very important that your needle's sharp and doesn't have any burrs, because if it has a burr on it, it can cut that rubber and then allow it to leak. So uh, that, that uh, leaks less than the uh, Schrader valve? Correct. Really? Yes. Uh, and in 16 years of doing this, I've seen these leak probably four or five times and it was more often because of a bad needle that got put through it. How many times could you poke that before you Many, got it? many, oh, many a really? times. As long as your needle is sharp. That's really? the big thing. Yeah, I've, I'm working with race teams have multiple, multiple 30, 40, 50 times through a race season. And we don't have to replace these as long as I make sure that my needle's sharp. And like I know Schrader valves like lose pressure over like a few months and I mean actually when, when I've worked with shocks I, I check the can pressure all the time because of the Schrader valve and that actually it, seals better than the Schrader valve does. It does and we don't have to check those gas pressures quite as much. And then uh, could that be replaced, uh, the, the rubber? Um, well, this, the way that these are put in, it is crimped oh, over. It's kind of squished in there. Yes, sir, it is. So um, if you we did- have to replace that whole piece. The whole cap, and you can actually buy this as an assembly with the O-ring and the screw out here. They're not terribly expensive. But, but that, that rubber should last for years. It should, as long as your needle's sharp. Oh, wow. That's the big thing, as long as your needle's sharp. That's and amazing. Yeah, it, it really is. So um, past that, we still have our floating piston inside of here. All right. To remove that, here again, another Olean's tool, a little bit bigger on the end. It screws down into the floating piston. And then we can just pull and overcome an O-ring. And there's our floating piston. Okay. It's comprised of a piston band and then an O-ring. This is what's separating the oil from the, the gas. Mm -hmm. um, this is in there just for that to ride up and down, and keep centered in, inside of the bore there. All 
All right, I am gonna dump the little bit of oil that's left in here and then we'll take the valves out and look at them. All right, to do that, Olean's makes, here again, another nice little tool for us to work with. So I'm actually gonna put it in this vise. And what we can do with this, is this fits our shock body. So we're able to put the shock in a vise like this and have a nice solid platform to work off of. All right, so we'll start with the high-low speed rebound. Uh, that is gonna be a 19. So if we put a 19 socket on there, we can turn this valve out. So all your, all your shims and all that are all contained in that unit? Yes, there. sir. Every, all the damping properties are now done on this valve and shim stack, which we're gonna take apart here in one second. So if you're, at, if you're at the track and you wanted to revalve your shock quick, you could just like degas it, pop these guys out, and not have to disassemble the whole. You're absolutely thing. correct. You can, as you're pulling the bob out, you're going to backfill in behind this, mm -hmm. so you don't get any air trapped in the cross drill over here. But yes, you can revalve. Uh, three to four times. Every time you crack one of these loose, even though you it's let the of, gas pressure, it kind of goes down half a millimeter, millimeter, just 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 enough. So Oleans likes to say after three, four revalves up here, you need to pull the cap out and, and reset the floating piston or- Kind of retract the piston and kind of- back Yeah, you can, you can do it in that manner. We've actually got what we call a sight glass. So it's a clear glass we can put up here at our filling port. Oh, that's neat. So we can pull and watch the oil come back down into it. Or you can put it on our vacuum filling machine, which we'll see in a little while, and that'll set the piston for you. So um, once we've got the rebound adjuster out, we're gonna go after the compression adjuster. So we will need a little Phillips head screwdriver and a 12 millimeter wrench. So if we hold our 12 and turn the little screw inside, it's gonna let our, oh, gonna let our cap come off. Down in behind the cap, now you can see that we have a couple of detents. A couple of detent balls and then two detent springs up right. underneath the balls. And then if we take a look inside of that cap there, we see the indentions mm -hmm. for our detents. So that's how we're making our clicks on, our, on this particular adjuster. Um, to get that out of there, we have a, here again an Olean's tool that goes down where those springs would be. And then we can remove the compression adjuster. And this is only a high speed compression you're saying? Uh, low speed, oh, low, speed. low speed compression. And if I wanted to do a two way compression, I could just upgrade with a different uh, valve assembly and just drop that in there. That's correct. Oh, that's, that's pretty handy. Yes, sir. Uh, here again in behind, we've got a little bitty spring. <clears throat> um, at this particular point, the shock body is completely apart. Mm -hmm. um, now we do have the tools should we need to remove this reservoir. It's as simple as putting a sleeve on it and using a spanner wrench to spin that off. Uh -oh. It just has red grease on it and a little O-ring. Um, also with the shock body, should we need to replace it for any reason. Uh, here again, we've got a sleeve that slides on. We actually use the same spanner that we would use for this. This does have Loctite, so we can put a little heat up here. A little. Yeah, a little heat, and then uh, break that loose, spin it out. There's an O-ring inside of there, uh, 270 Loctite, and then we torque it back on. All right. All right. And uh, are these uh, ports labeled compression and rebounds? They or? are not, they are not. Uh-oh. Um, uh <laughs> I'm gonna show you a trick. Um, with a flashlight, if we take a flashlight and we shine in one side, you can see a lot of light inside of there. Uh-huh. Right? So if I take it, put it in this port, okay. we can't see a lot of light. No. It's all down on the side. Okay. So this would be our compression port because the oil needs to come through across the valve over to the rebound. On this side and, of the piston. Correct. 
and go in between that inner and outer tube. Okay. Hence why the hole's on the outside on this one. Uh, I see. So that would come down and go underneath of the seal head, or in between the seal head, and underneath the piston, and then as the shock starts the rebound stroke, that whole path of oil reverses, comes back up through here, goes across the cross drill, across the adjuster, opens the check valve, and back fills in beside, behind that. So, so you do right away, so people probably mixed that up before. They have mixed them up before, and, and if you take and put the inner tube inside mm -hmm. of there, then you really get to see how much room's not there in between the inner and outer tube. No, it's not. And, really. and even more so with our light in it there, you can see those oil paths. Yep. I was just thinking ways I'd probably mess up. You can, you can. Um, typically rebounds on the right, typically. All right, so let's, let's talk about these adjusters here. So we've got, these are called check valve springs. Let's say check valve, if we look on the back side mm -hmm. of the valve here, you can see a little shim. Mm -hmm. So that shim opens and closes depending on the, the Which oil way path. You want the oil to go. Obviously, yeah. And in the center, we've got, there's our low speed bleed with a needle inside of there mm -hmm. that's adjusting that. And then obviously our shim stack out here on the outside. So um, you can see a little circlip right okay. there. So what we're gonna do is take a pair of circlip pliers in the little holes and just spread it enough to get that off of there. Okay. Then we can see our valve. Okay. This is known as a 21044-15. It's bead blasted All right. on the face of this to give it porous. What would you want porous? If you've ever had a shim on a piece of glass with some oil well, on it, and you it tried to, it up. gets stuck. Well, if you have a mirror finish on a valve, which that's the way the original ones came, there was actually a stick of the shim and then a release. So it caused a little bit of a delay. Mm -hmm. So they started bead blasting the face of these and even the back sides of them with the newest pistons. Yeah, I did not know that. Yes, sir. So if we lay our shim stack out here. Is, the, uh, is this face concave at all? No, sir. Okay. Perfectly flat. Um, as we get our shim stack off, you can see it's a pyramid stack mm -hmm. going from, I believe, and let me double check this so I don't misspeak. <laughs> I believe this should be a 0.15 by 22. So 0.15. And that's the part where, uh, that people call the Christmas tree and it would normally be on the piston. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So like I said, this is all done on the valve. So this is a 0.10 by 22. So they've backed that particular shim up, and then we should be, go, yep, 0 0.1520, 0 0.1518, And then this is known as a clamp. Okay, so this is ultimately what the shim stack's bending over, and we have different sizes, uh -huh. seven, eight, nine, 10, and even 11. Um, so if you can see a small step on it right there, mm -hmm. if we were to measure that step, nine millimeters. And that's so kind of how you control your digressiveness with the diameter of that guy. Correct, or, or your high speed. You can change the high speed a lot with that. If we look on the back side, there is a chamfer to sit down on the radius on the bob. Okay. That's what we call this, is a bob. Um, so that sits on there with our pyramid stack and then our valve with the clip. Um, technically the clip's just on there to kind of hold. We spoke of revalving at the track and pulling mm -hmm. that bob out. That helps you as you pull the bob out. Not, you don't have to necessarily have that. It just helps everything come off. Then as I said before, your check valve check spring valve. back in behind that. And uh, do you got a choice of uh, pistons too? We like do. Different windows. Um, and the car side of things, um, I'm not sure is exactly how many valves they use. I can show you some different valves that we use in the motorcycle world. Um, they're actually brass valves. Okay. A couple of different variations there. 
Um, and we have different setting banks for these, so we don't have to go in and guess what shim we need to put to make a different stack. We have pre-built um, setting banks that Sweden has provided us, um, so we can go in and look at you know, this valve with a particular stack and get a damping curve. And a lot of the, the port geometry has to do with how the shim exposes it when it's flexing and, and has ultimately like the base shape of the curve in it. Correct, correct. Um, this particular <clears throat> valve in itself, this is new to us. Um, this actually builds a lot of low speed damping mm -hmm. initially. Um, whereas we would used to use this valve with a preloaded shim stack. Mm -hmm. um, so we can get actually more damping out of this valve without the preloaded stack. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very useful in the, in the two wheel world and we use these quite a bit. So you're talking about preload, so that's some concaveness? No, it? no, it was actually done with the shim stack. Oh, you would have a face shim and then you would have a ring shim in between. Oh, a ring shim? Yep, okay. yep, a ring, yeah, a ring shim setup um, where the center shim is thinner than the ring shim. So that actually gives the stack some preload. I know some companies like have different concaveness on the face of the pistons. They so do, they do. Just play with the preload that And way. you'll see in this one, I believe that uh, this one, it has a little concave to it in that uh, it usually has a .10 shim on the face of it. Oh, okay. A, a 12 before it gets to the 22, but we're gonna take that part in one second. Um, as far as this needle inside of here, would you like to see how that comes sure. apart? Okay. Um, let me just need to take these and just get her started turning. There we go. All right, so if we run this all the way in, this one's a fun one. We can see, barely see that little circlip down in there. Yep, yep. Okay, so I'm gonna get the end of the circlip where that flat is. Mm -hmm. And I've just gotten a technique on this a couple of days ago because I've been working on those Norma shocks. We're just gonna lightly hold this in the vise. And these are some special tools that we've actually had to make to get that circlip out. You can see this screwdriver we've ground down to a fine point. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got a little bit of curvature to it. Um, so what I'm gonna do is go down inside of there and get that circlip pulled out and then take this pick in behind and try to grab the edge lip of it and then make sure you put your finger over the top. Otherwise it flips across the room. Well, that's pretty slick. Oh, there it goes. There it went. I think it went in the... Uh, I think it fell down here actually. Oh, there it is right here. Look at there. That little bitty circlip. And then from there, we can turn the adjuster needle back out and it'll eventually come to an O-ring. All right. And there's that low speed needle. Okay. So under a normal service, we're gonna replace this O-ring out here. We're gonna replace this O-ring, re-grease it, uh, make sure that there's no scratches inside of here, things like that. Is there a stop to prevent people from overscrewing that? There is not. There, I mean, it, it does come to a positive stop in here, obviously on that shoulder. However, if you can try to turn it more, in which case it would... See, yes. Digs up the needle. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and that's somebody it, trying, to, trying to get that little bit more, even though it's closed. Tear it up to level 11. Yes, exactly. I, which, I've, I've seen that happen a lot. So if we put that back in and screw it all the way down, Here again, I'm gonna lightly hold this in the vise. Then we can take that circlip and just start one side of it usually. And then I'll use the same little screwdriver to just push it into place. And then we're back in. Uh, at this particular point, I wanna open that back up so when we do go to fill it, everything's open. If that was me, I would have launched it across the room. And that does happen. I did that last week. So you get lost. That happens in our shop all the time. Luckily, we have some spare parts laying around. So I was able to get a circlip from something else. All right, so that's back open now. Um, 
While we're right here, I'm just gonna go ahead and put our stack back on, making sure that our step is out towards the stack. And then I like to count 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, and then we've got a double 22 here. Get that little circlip and we just spread it just enough to get it down in that groove. Okay. All right, so there we are. All right, let's take a look at this two-way adjuster. So it has the same little circlip on the back side, so we use the same pliers. And then as we take this valve off, it's actually, this is the same valve. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see what kind of stack this has on it. This particular shock actually did not come with a two-way valve. It came with singles on both sides. Um, so at this point, we would stop and call the customer and say, hey, you've got a two-way adjuster. It didn't come like this, you know, and, and decide if they had made that upgrade or, you know, if somebody had done it and they didn't know, things of that nature. So as we see here, mm -hmm. another pyramid stack. I'm gonna remove that just to get that little clamp, same mm -hmm. little clamp. It is a little bit thicker for this adjuster. But what we have here is a cup mm -hmm. that actually sits on the shim stack and then a little spring in behind it. Okay. So that's what's making our high speed blow off. Oh, okay, so it blows off and there's another stack. Yep, so in behind it, we have predetermined thickness of shim here, and that can be changed depending on how much preload you wanna put on this. And then this is a backing plate for those two little pins to sit on. And those two little pins sit inside of here, and they were that, are what actually pushes on this system as you turn that high speed adjuster uh, in. Okay. So it's actually making this go in further. Excuse me, uh, the pins go in further. Pushing on that cup is pushing on the shim stack, okay? You can see this is just held on by an O-ring there. And then we're gonna take this two-way adjuster apart. Here again, we've got some pieces and parts in here that can kind of fling across the room. So we're gonna to have to be kind of careful when we do this. So we're gonna take our 12, turn it in, till we hear it stop clicking. And I'm gonna to need to turn it just a little bit more. We're not quite out of the threads and you can see that's kind of bottomed out in there. Right. Um, it's, I don't have a good way of doing this. I don't, I don't like this, but just barely grabbing enough to turn it a couple of little turns. Okay. And then you should be able to push that out. These are Nipex pliers. They have no teeth on them. No. They're nice and smooth. We use these quite a bit in, in our service department. Okay, now that we've got it out of the threads, I'm going to put my hand around it as I push it down and hope that... Hope that those little balls and springs don't fling across the room. That, that's what I was trying to avoid. All right, so now if we look inside of here, you see cutouts for the detent, mm -hmm. hence the balls on the outside, spring mm -hmm. inside. Then if we actually go after this needle, it's gonna have cutouts in it too. Spring inside, <laughs> or excuse me, ball inside, spring, ball outside. Okay. That's how we're making our detent with this. So to get that needle out, just like with the low speed adjuster we just did, we run that all the way in, we see a little circlip. It's actually the same little circlip. However, in this particular case, we've got a little more room in there to work mm -hmm. with. So here again, I like to just barely hold this in the vise. And then you can take this circlip and flip one side of it down oh, wow. and it picked up the back side. And then we can just pull it out much easier. At that point, 
we can run the needle back out. Oh, all right. And there's our low speed needle. And here again, you can see the cutouts for the detent ball. Okay. And that's what's making your click inside of this adjuster. So here again, under a normal service, this O-ring gets changed. It is a sealing O-ring. This is also a sealing O-ring. And then the O-ring on the outside of the housing here. Mm -hmm. So those three O-rings would get changed under a service. What I like about, about these is that all your detents are really big and so you can actually feel, like a, other guys, they make the detents really small and they're uh -huh. hard to feel like when you're at the track. Right, right. But yeah, you, you definitely get the click feel mm -hmm. with, with our stuff. Um, to get this back together, grease the O-ring. We can put that back down inside of there and then we're gonna run it all the way down. Take our little circlip. I like to put the circlip with the uh, ends of it down. And then once you get it down inside of there, you can usually push on the back side till it gets in the groove and boom, there you are. Just like with the low speed, we're gonna open this up. So when we go to fill it, everything's open. Now comes the fun part, getting all of those springs and balls and all of that stuff back into here. So start with one side, put a ball, put a spring, hold that spring, flip it over, ball, spring. And at this point, I like to take my three Allen and make sure that the needle is at its lowest point. Mm -hmm. Right there. All right. Now we got to do some tricks. We're gonna take. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna actually take and put a little grease on the ends of these springs. And then we're gonna take. Hopefully, this is easier said than done. Take and stick. Oh, I've got too much grease on my finger now. All right, here's one side, it just fell. Okay, now that we have them stuck, I'm gonna take and squeeze them together and then take the housing and push them into there. And you can see them kind of sitting right here on the edge. Here again, my special little screwdriver. I'm just gonna take and help those balls get into place, and then I'm able to push that back into there. Here again, because I don't have anything exposed up top, I am gonna have to use my little Nipex pliers to get it started. But once I have enough exposed, then we can take the 12 on the back side and, and open that thing back up. Okay, that looks like enough there. Yep, okay. All right, and there's that adjuster put back together minus our shim stack. So at this particular point, I'm gonna put that piece back down on the O-ring. Mm -hmm. You can see the six holes here. Um, the ones in the center are a little bigger than these, mm -hmm. and that's where the pins actually go. And I'm gonna put those in there so we can take a look at that. So with the adjuster all the way open, you can see those pins sit flat. Flush. Yes. And then nice steel washer for those mm -hmm. to push off of. Here again, I said we could change however thick these mm -hmm. are, depending on what kind of preload we wanna have on that. Then our spring sits on top of this. Mm -hmm. Here's that cup. Mm -hmm. It's actually gonna push on the shim stack and we can see how that spring's gonna work on there now. Mm -hmm. So at that point, we make sure that we have our clamp in the correct direction. Here again, this is a nine clamp. You can see the step in it. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna put that on and then we can put our 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 
And then 22s. Oh. All right, now if we take a look at the back side of that stack, you can see where that cup <coughs> is actually pushing on our shim stack. Okay. Okay. From there, we can put our valve back on and our circlip. I like how that probably won't have that much cross stock. What's that? Uh, it will probably won't have that much cross stock the way the valve is. You know, like how some shocks you, you uh, play around with the high speed and it changes the low speed a lot. Yes, no, these are completely yeah. separate circuits, so you don't have that effect. Yeah, I Sorry, like I've that. never heard the term cross talk. <laughs> That's, that's, that's a new one for me. <clears throat> well, okay. Some, some shots you turn one knob and it affects. Our, our single tube, yes. The, what's known as the rebound adjuster is actually common bleed. Affects compression. So um, before we take a look at the shaft, I'm going to go ahead and put the bobs back into the, the uh, cylinder head. So I'm going to put it back in our shock vise. As I said before, this side's compression, we know that because we shined a light and that goes towards the center. This one's towards the outside. So I'm gonna put the compression check valve springs. And if you look down inside of there, there's actually a cutout for that spring to sit inside of. Oh, yep. You see that? Yep. All right, so with a little bit of grease on the threads of this, we can put our bob back in. Is that a special grease? It, it is, it's an Olean's grease. It's what they use in all of their production. Um, it's it's like basically- It really mixes with it real good. Yeah, it so. used to be actually this red grease here and, and what would happen, it would turn the oil a pinkish color. So they went to this more clear grease, so um, it, it doesn't do that. So- um, And the grease kind of dissolves with the fluid so you don't it, have a big hunk of grease going it, through there. That's correct. So I'm gonna screw this down and then we're gonna to torque this. Let's see, actually. These particular bobs are 10 Newton meter, mm -hmm. which I already have that set. So, and we're real critical of this 10 Newton meter. Sorry for the beeping. So there's that one. We can take the two springs, put back inside of there. Take the two balls, put on there. And then if we look inside of this cap right here, we see the two mm -hmm. flats for the needle there. So I like to use my index finger and, and reference one of the curves. So that way, as I put this on, I can make sure yeah, well, that yeah. it falls where it's supposed to, as it doesn't, <laughs> of course. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> of course, this is, it just fell into the shock body. Never had that happen. Oh, it went way down in there. Mm hmm. Oh. There you go. There it is. Let me get a reset here and we'll, we'll. Have another go at it. That's like some of that There we go. Me. There we go. <laughs> what did we do with our little screw? I think it fell into the drip pan, actually. Uh, Hold on. I think it fell down here. I'm glad y'all can. <sighs> you were absolutely correct. Here you go. Thank you, sir. Here's you a, a rag. So we'll put the screw back in. Screw it back down. Uh, we don't get crazy, uh, too crazy on the torque of this because you can round that, that head out on that screw. So just a nice little snug down. Make sure we're open. Yes, we are. All right, now we can do the two-way valve, the rebound side. Here again, we're gonna take a little bit of this grease. We've put our spring, our check spring down inside of there. We can put that side in. Same torque on this one, 10 Newton meter. Okay. 
And here again, very critical. What happens if you over torque these, it'll actually increase the damping curve. So you're very critical on the torque of this. Because they'll distort the body and- That's correct. Kind of bind up. All right, so 10 Newton meter on that. And that has our body back together. Let's take a look at the shaft now, see what's all on it. So because the end dies can be a little loose on the, the car stuff, we typically like to take some 14, 16 shaft blocks and hold the end of the shaft. And then this nut here, this is a um, 14, which I, Gonna be quite honest with you, I wasn't prepared for. They're usually a 12. Um, <laughs> here we go. Okay. Okay. So, as I said, a lot of these were eight millimeter post as opposed to this 10 millimeter. Mm -hmm. With an eight millimeter post, the, the torque on this flange nut would be 28 Newton meter. With the 10 post, we're going to 40 Newton meter, mm -hmm. so quite a bit more torque. Um, as we take this off, um, we saw the main piston there is solid, that O-ring in behind it. That gives preload to the band? Yes, it, it, it puts pressure on the band to keep, you know, pressure so uh, to keep it sealed up on the inner tube. From there, this is just a spacer taking up some space on the shaft here. In behind that is our seal head. We're gonna be careful to take this off. If we take a look at our seal head, there's a few different pieces that comprise this, this piece up. Uh, a seal on the outside. Uh, if you look down inside, you see a, a white ring, which is a guide ring. Mm -hmm. And behind the guide ring is an X ring, so our sealing ring. Mm -hmm. And then if we look on the back side, we see the bushing mm -hmm. and then a top out rubber. All of our seal heads have some kind of top out rubber in them. So we don't come to a metal to metal. So when you service the shock, is this one unit you replace or do you dig that apart? Um, you can take these pieces out and replace them. Um, here at, at, at our service department, we typically replace the whole seal head simply mm -hmm. because the time that we take to pull all of this stuff out and put it back in, and uh, we can't guarantee at that point that we didn't mess up that X ring or anything. Mm -hmm. If we replace the seal head, at least at that point, we can about guarantee that you know, nothing happened to the seal head. So we, it is common practice for us to replace the whole oh, seal right. head. Um, from there, all we have left is an end cap. Mm -hmm. So um, clean this up. Sometimes they have bump rubbers on them, things like that. Uh, but other than that, you have just the shaft. Obviously we would inspect the shaft, mm -hmm. make sure there's no pits or, or scratches or anything like that. There again, if, if the customer lets the shock service interval go a long, long time, you can start to get wear marks up and down that can become too deep to where you can't sand them out. Um, we you will take sand them? We, the hard, this hardened chrome, we will take some 1200 grit sandpaper and, or 1500, uh, put it in a drill press or, or drill and, kind of and give it a polish. yeah, give it a polish and try to knock some of that down. Um, you know, if we think we can save the shaft, we will. If it's questionable, we'll go ahead and replace it. So, when you service it, do you replace the piston band and the O ring? Yes, yeah, so, so this O ring would get replaced, this O ring would get replaced, this uh, piston band on the floating piston, the main piston band in the shock body, also the O ring on oh, here. Okay. All of those pieces get replaced under a service. So we have uh, what's known as shaft bullets. So this is a sleeve that slides over the threads where we would put the flange nut on top. Um, once we put this onto here, you can take a little bit of the grease and put on there to help this slide on. Also, what we like to do is take a little bit of the assembly grease and put inside of the seal head, um, a little bit inside of that outer lip, just so when we put this seal head on there, it slides on nicely and doesn't come to a dry spot. Once we've done that, um, remove that out of the way. Spacer on there. Then we can put that, and then our flange nut. 
And as I said before, um, 40 Newton on the torque of this. Love digital torque wrenches. <laughs> Okay, now that we have that at 40, uh, one thing I like to do when I'm servicing a shock is I go ahead and put this piston band on, which I would put some assembly grease on. Go ahead and squeeze it together and I actually take the inner tube and go ahead and put it on at this point. Get it down into the cutouts for the seal head, mm -hmm. and then I pull it up like this because we're about to take the seal head, put it back into our shock body, and then we're going to go fill this. So if I take the body and put it back up in the vise here, take some grease and put on the o ring and threads of the seal head. We can put this down inside of here. We'll use our same seal head tool that we removed it with to screw this down. You can see it didn't quite get all the way. So what happened was that inner tube kind of caught on the seal head. Mm -hmm. So if you turn it back a quarter of a turn, it'll usually center itself up and then you can get the thing all the way down because it should go flush with this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, now we need to torque this and this is torqued it at 40 Newton as well. So we can use our same torque wrench. We're gonna do this at a 90 degree angle so that we don't over torque it. All righty, 40 Newton. This particular point, excuse me, I'm gonna grab a rag. I want to make sure that we wipe inside of here really well because if we leave any residual oil, it'll just come down the shaft and then the customer thinks the shock's leaking even though it was just not us cleaning very well. So um, we would spray a cleaner down inside of there. Uh, once we've done that and we're happy with how clean it is, we just need to tap this cap on using a rubber hammer. There we go. Get that all the way down. And then we can take our floating piston and put down inside of our reservoir. Um, one thing I like to do, and I've been doing with our Norma stuff, is I'll take a little bit of this grease and just put down inside of the reservoir where that O-ring's gonna be running. Also some grease, assembly grease on the O-ring. And the piston band. Take the piston band and put it on. And then you can take, put that in there. And then I just use the palm of my hand, start that in, make sure that you don't get the piston band caught. And there we go. We're gonna push that all the way down to bottom. All the way. All, right. all the way. Now, I spoke earlier of we were going to put this on the filling machine to put oil in it. Obviously, I just assembled it um, without any oil in it. The way that we do that is we take the tool that we remove the floating piston with. Mm -hmm. In combination with this, we can put this down onto the floating piston. All right, and I know I want that... Um, um, floating piston, I said 15 millimeters off bottom. Mm -hmm. So if I put my circlip in here and I run this up, up against it, from here down to that surface is four millimeters. So if I want 15 plus four, 19 millimeters. So I can simply take, measure out on my caliper at 19 millimeter. Set that depth right there. Mm -hmm. So when it goes to the fill process, the floating piston will push to the 15 millimeters desired mm -hmm. and stop. 
So at this particular point, we're ready to go to the filling machine. All right. All right, this is our vacuum filling machine. Uh, when we say vacuum filling machine, it actually has a vacuum pump on it. Um, we'll, we'll create a vacuum inside of the shock, pulling the air out of it. And then from there, we go to the pressurization of it, which forces the oil with the vacuum and a little bit of air pressure on it into the shock absorber. Right. So first thing we need to do is to get this prepared um, is start the machine up and it's gonna ask you to vacuum the oil tank, and this is our clean oil. So vacuuming the clean oil, what we're trying to do is pull the air or as much air molecule out of the oil as possible before we introduce it into the damper. So this particular point, they like you to pull it down for roughly five minutes. You Make, actually pull the, uh, the, the dissolved air out of the oil. You're trying to, oh, that's, that's, that's the silly. idea. That's the idea of this. So we'll let this suck down for five minutes and then we actually equalize the pressure inside of this tank. And from there, once it's equalized, um, we add pressure, which is three bar of pressure. And so what'll happen is it'll put air on top of the oil in here to help the damper vacuum and fill process. And once we leave that air on top of here, after roughly about 30 minutes or so, the air starts penetrating back in the oil in which case we have to stop the machine, break it down and restart it with the vacuum into the oil again. All right. Now that we've allowed for the um, vacuum to pull the suction on the main tank, we turn that into the off position, go to the tank evacuation, which will release the air out of the main tank. And then we're gonna actually pressurize the main tank. So we put three bar gas pressure on top of the oil here. Uh, at this point, we can take the filling screw out with our T25 Torx. This is our filling piece. We will screw into here. I've also taken some spacers and put on the shaft to make sure that the shaft doesn't suck in when we go to the vacuum. We like to keep this cavity over here open. Makes it a little easier to feel. So at this point, we hook up the machine and we go damper, vacuum. So this is actually pulling a vacuum on the shock absorber right now. We'll allow that to pull down for approximately a minute or so. Okay. So we wanna make sure we get a nice solid vacuum. I know at the racetrack, um, sometimes we'll let it vacuum three or four minutes just to make sure that we've got that, that nice solid vacuum on it. So once we've let that sit for a minute, at that point we can take this knob, make sure our sir clip's in, we don't want to mess, and we can go to the pressure, and you will see yep, that piston go. push back. You also see the shaft push back just a little bit, not a big deal. So at this particular point, it's full of oil. It was, uh, it, it happens pretty quick, and uh, obviously with, with a shock like this, you don't get to see what's happening inside. Um, but uh, we have done clear pieces on it before, and, and when the oil gets flipped over, it's, it's instantaneous. So once we've done the fill process, we go back to the off position. We can turn that off. One thing I like to do, because right now this system does have about three bar of grass pressure on it. So if we take this off, it's gonna Shoot squirt that. a little bit of oil out. So if you take and just crack that, mm -hmm. it takes the pressure off of the oil. Makes it a little bit cleaner. So we can see oil in mm -hmm. the top here. Gonna allow just a little bit to drip in there. And then we can take our screw and put into the top. And that sealed it off at this particular point. Thank you, sir. All right. All that's left is removal of this, mm -hmm. putting our end cap and gassing, which okay. we'll do it over at my bench. All right, now we need to get our sir clip out. Here again, I like to use my fingernails, try not to scratch inside of there. Mm -hmm. Pull our tool out. 
we can see our floating piston set. Yep, right at the perfect height. Right at the perfect height, that's correct. A um, little bit of grease on this O-ring here on the end cap. And then here again, uh, I like to use the palm of my hand to put this in. And if we just hold it down enough, you can usually roll that circlip right into there. All right. All right. From there, uh, we take our filling needle, a little bit of grease on it. Center it and go ahead and screw it in. Put our gauge on. And then we can take our nitrogen and fill to our eight bar. And you have to put one more bar in then, then so you have to actually have it to nine. So well, so Olean's is accounted for that when they put their gas pressure on their oh, spec okay. cards. So if it says eight, it's you, already you, figured you, out yes, the volume yes, in there. Yes, okay. correct. So um, you can see there we're about nine. So here again, we can bleed it off a little bit until we're at eight. There we are. Oh, okay. And then we're gonna disconnect from here. That leaves our nitrogen inside of there. Take our needle out. Don't forget your O-ring and your little screw. T20 Torx, we'll put that in. And then we can wipe the uh, damper off and set all of our compression low high speed rebound. That's it. Uh, from there, we would take it and put it on the dyno, run it on the dyno to make sure that it it's, uh, has the damping forces that it should. And from there, it can go out the door to the customer. So we've got the shock mounted. Um, at that point, we can start a test. Uh, with this particular test, it's going to warm the shock up to uh, 80 degrees Fahrenheit before it actually starts the damping test. So you will see it, and if it's already 81 degrees, it'll skip that portion, which it looks like it's gonna do. It says it's actually about 81 degrees Fahrenheit. So right now it's checking gas pressure. And then it'll start its actual test, slowly ramping up to get low speed damping all the way up to high speed damping. Uh, depending on what kind of test we want to run. From that point, we can go into whichever file we have for a particular car, and we can save those files. So if they ever need to reference back to them, we have all of that information and here is our damping graph, uh, compression on top side, rebound on bottom side, um, force in pounds versus uh, inches per second on the bottom. And that way you can do your quality control check, you overlay can. it, you can. make sure that the, the damping's the same as it was. Absolutely. That and uh, I know for as far as these guys are concerned, these IMSA dampers, uh, they, they have to pretty much match every, all four dampers. You know, uh, so I've, Eric and, and myself has been, and Mikey have spent a lot of time uh, with those things, making sure that they they match up. And we do send copies of dyno graphs to every customer um, once we've we've done that. So thank you for showing us how to rebuild the shock and how to do the quality check on it, and uh, it was super interesting. Um, so uh, anybody can send their stuff, get it all serviced, and. Uh, Compared to how it was, um, pretty, yeah. pretty interesting. Yeah, we can service it up and we can dyno it and make sure that uh, when you get it back, it's as good as it was when you bought it new. So if you like this whole Lean's content, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Keep tuned in, we're gonna have more and more. And I uh, hope you find this all really interesting, like we found it really interesting. See you next time.